Judge Lauren gets enraged on paternity court. Mr. Carbajal, take me back. Okay. You meet each other. Yeah. Yes. Because I'm trying to figure out why was there ever doubt in the first place. Well, I met her through a social network. She told me, hey, come to come see me, you know, for the weekend or just a, one night. So I want to go see her. This time in the courtroom, Gabriela Lopez and her mother are trying to prove that two-year-old Aliana and one-year-old Noah are Horatio Carbajal's kids and that the DNA test carried out on them was fraudulent. Whereas Mr. Carbajal and his sister are completely sure that they are not. You told him you're pregnant. Yes. He didn't seem to be that enthused. No, what? he was not. Was there any other person? No, Your Honor. That you were having sex with at that time? No, Your Honor. I need to clarify. You're the mother of two children. Yes, Your Honor. But there is a doubt as to the paternity to both of the children. That's what you contend, Mr. Carbajal? Yes, Your Honor. Miss Lopez states that they started a relationship the moment they met, and when she fell pregnant with their daughter, he wasn't happy about it because he didn't want to have a kid with someone he didn't even love. I, growing up, I did not have a father, and I did not want my daughter growing up without a father. Well, it hurts me to know that she does not have him around. He, he says he's the father. He even has the, her name tattooed on his arm. He was there a You week. have her name yes, tattooed do, your on Honor. your arm? Yes. Yes, I do. Even though you doubt it? Because I was, when she was first born, I was attached to her. When talking about Aliana, Miss Lopez says that during the window of conception, she was with no one else but Mr. Carbajal. Carbajal, on the other hand, says that she's only doing all of this for their money. Lopez denies it and states the actual reason she is doing this. Okay, so all you got is a picture on a cell phone and you go, oh, this guy looks just like my niece. I don't think my brother's the father. What other doubt do you have? Did you witness? Did my, you my, hear about her sleeping my, with my other people? My family was, uh, they when they were born, they didn't look nothing like us. My mom and my dad were saying Your daughter did look that like you. they had nothing related to us. Judge Lake is close to losing her patience when Mr. Carbajal's sister says that they have doubts about the paternity because Miss Lopez showed their other sister a picture of a man. And the sister immediately saw an uncanny resemblance to Noah. At the hospital, you say they weren't? They were at the hospital after they were born. I was there when Aliana was born, when she was being pulled out of my daughter. Second time around, he wasn't there either for the Noah's birth. I was there for Noah's birth. I was there for both babies. Why can I be? Why is it? Why because you could not. Yeah, I was going to go. You changed I was your going. phone number. When it's turned to talk about Noah, Mr. Carbajal says that Lopez didn't even let him sign the birth certificate when he was born. Lopez's mother, on the other hand, shoots back that he wasn't even there for the entirety of the pregnancy. Judge Lake is close to losing it, but calls the mother to stand to say her piece. And Ms. That, Lopez, you sent him a picture? I sent him a picture to show why, why him. someone else him? holding a child that you said was his? Um, I sent it because to show him that there would be another man, possibly, why would, why would be possibly, another man? possibly okay, be another possibly man? to man up and take care of his responsibilities. I did not meet up with my ex until a month before I had my daughter. When Judge Lake asks Karabahal why he has doubts, he points out the fact that the kid has a cleft lip, which his family does not have a history of. But all hell breaks loose when Carbajal reveals that when Aliana was born, Miss Lopez sent him a picture of another man holding the child. And, she said she got pregnant in November when I seen her in December. I was not pregnant in November, yes, okay? Yes, I did not. She came, came to visit. She came to so visit to my house. So you believe she was already pregnant? Yes. 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 No. Were you intimate with anyone else? No, Your Honor. I was not. Mr. Carbajal, do you believe you were the only man she was having sex with? I don't know that. See, I don't know if she was sleeping with me. I... Carbajal's sister argues that when she sent him that picture, she was already pregnant with Noah, who looks exactly like the ex. Lopez argues she did that only to tell Carbajal that if he didn't man up, someone else was willing to. But Mr. Carbajal dropped yet another bomb. Okay, let me ask you this. In the paperwork, do you have to include photo ID? No, nothing like that. No ID? No. So no ID to it, identify no. which All we gotta do kids. is swabbing or just put the name of the father and, and you, the kids. And you write that name yeah. in. The names are wrong on there. My daughter's name is spelled wrong. Uh, it was the kids. I do not know if it, it was, was the kids. kids. It, it was, was the kids. kids. Was my mom there. was there. She knew what she was doing. I was writing their names money. on there. You think my mom you was gonna spend money? Judge Lake then turns the attention back to the fraudulent DNA test 
and Lopez says that he bought the paternity test from the store without even telling her, and then presented her with the fraudulent results just to get out of taking care of the kids. Judge Lake is skeptical about the results, too. So now we've administered a new test because the bottom line is I can't accept the results of that home test. Okay. Judge Lake rightfully doesn't trust the results because even though Carbajal's mother witnessed them, they have no proof of it. On top of that, the results don't have the proper details needed to make sure it is authentic. There's no way You're just that... looking something, for something to argue about. You're just looking for something to say. What you need to be talking about is that lie you told saying you weren't sleeping with nobody else. <laughs> but suddenly, on the relevant <laughs> subjects, we're silent. In the case of Aliana, unfortunately for Lopez, Carbajal is not the father. But when both parties start going off on each other, Judge Lake gives them an earful about how they're still arguing over the at-home DNA test when a proper state-conducted DNA result is right in front of them. So you lied because you just didn't want to face the truth? Yes, Your Honor. So you were willing to make him live out the lie, their whole family, so that you wouldn't have to face your lie. Yes, Your Honor, I did. This time, when Judge Lake asks if she was with another man during the time Aliana was conceived, Lopez says yes. Judge Lake tears her apart for lying in the courtroom just because she didn't want to face the truth. I don't even know if you're telling the truth right now. No, I Because only you know the truth. And I will leave you with this cautionary tale. If the mother is a liar, what will the children be? My Answer me. Possibly the same. Yes. Take that with you and learn from that, okay? When the paternity results for Noah are presented, just like Aliana, Mr. Carbajal is not his father. But when Lopez tells Judge Lake that both the kids have two different dads, the judge is just done. So, Ms. Renfro, why do you believe Mr. Tuzi is denying paternity? He don't want to take financial responsibility. He hasn't been there. He wasn't there through my pregnancy. When I had the baby, he, my baby, he wasn't there. Um, for his surgery, he wasn't there. I've contacted him. I tried to let him know, and there was still nothing. No response, no, uh, you know. Things start off messy in the courtroom when Danielle Renfro states that she wants to prove paternity because Andrea Tuzzi has to take responsibility for his son, six-month-old Kendall, who has a medical condition that's been allegedly passed down from him. But Tuzzi denies it. Remember what he said? I just kind of glanced through it. So wait a minute. You saw text messages which indicated that you may not be the biological father of a child and you can't remember none of them? It's it's not that I don't remember. I just didn't know what he was sex being was. nosy and trying to find something he could find. Well, do you find. remember being in a sexual relationship with Ms. Renfro? Yes, I do, ma'am. Do you remember not using protection? Yes, ma'am. Mr. Tuzzi reasons that the child looked nothing like him. Ms. Renfro reveals that Mr. Tuzzi ghosted her when she became pregnant because he thought it was one of her exes, all because of some messages he'd seen on her phone. But Judge Lake loses her cool when he says he doesn't remember what they said. But you do understand that despite all of that, it has zero relevance as it relates to this child born to this woman. Yes, Your Honor. My son has an issue with his, his stomach. He was born with what you call Hirschberger's disease, and it's passed through genetics. And none of my other kids have it. Tuzi says that something like this had happened to him before in a relationship where the mother claimed he was the father, but he turned out not to be. Judge Lake obviously tells him that holds no relevance in this case. My son deserves to know who his dad is because of his, the issues he has with his health and he, he just needs to take responsibility for his child. Miss Renfrau gets emotional talking about the struggles her son has gone through because of Hirschsprung's disease, but Tuzi denies that he even has that condition. But Renfrau sticks to her guns. So, Mr. Tuzi, do you have this disease, Hirschsprungs? Do you have this? No, Your Honor. Does anyone in your family have issues with their intestinal tract? No, no, Your Honor. And you don't have this disease no, in your family as well? No. Renfro denies being with someone else during the time of conception, but Mr. Tuzi calls her out by asking why another man signed the birth certificate. 
Renfro defends herself by saying she only did it because the ex wanted to be their father figure and help out with his condition. How has this been for the last It's couple? stressful. It's hard. I, my son has to see a surgeon twice a month. Um, he's in and out of the hospital with infections in his intestines. It's, and my son deserves to know who his dad is. And it is zero doubt in your mind whenever you had a baby then. because you ignored my calls and text messages. Judge Lake is appalled that Tuzi's testimony is based on the fact that the child can't be his because he's not as dark as he should be. On the other hand, she asks Miss Renfro what the past six months have been like for her, considering her child has this medical condition. Oh, oh, wait, hold on. Hold on, Miss Renfro. Come on out. You're getting a whole nother little attitude now. I want to see it. So you say stuff happens. Yes, ma'am. Oh, it sure does. Sure it does. sure does. That ain't my baby. So you say stuff happened. Yes, ma'am. So why don't you testify to what happened I'm then? I'm saying what happened. So what happened? All is well up until the point when Judge Lake calls Miss Renfro's best friend to the stand, and doitung her testimony, she lets slip that Renfro had indeed slept with someone during the time of conception. But all she had to say was that stuff happens, you know. I'm just thinking that how I know for a fact this ain't my kid. She How do you just, know, she though? Just proved, she just How do you it. know? That don't prove nothing because of who I slept with. That don't mean nothing. I used the condom, so there is no other option. It's you. But you were sleeping around, though. I wasn't sleeping around. If we wasn't together, it don't matter who I was sleeping with. Miss Renfro dropped the sweet act completely and admitted to sleeping with one other person but said that they used a condom. Judge Lake shuts down that argument by saying if she really believes they are 100% effective. She then turns to Tuzi and asks what he's thinking now. The reason why I think she's really trying to come after me is because I work two jobs and I take care but of I've my own responsibility. But I've never asked him for a dollar. But I've never asked him the for a dollar. The minute baby was born, you called me up and asked you me. You didn't answer the phone when I when I, my ex was at the hospital with me. Why when, would I answer the phone knowing that you're it, trying to put a baby on me that it ain't my baby? So what, what do you think her MO is, Mr. Tuzi? She's just trying to get money out of me. That's it. Regardless of the truth coming out, Renfro still sticks to the story that the kids are his even though she slept with the other dude during the time of conception. Then Mr. Tuzi reveals why she might be trying so hard to prove it's his. I'm working with you. I'm working with you because I realize you have doubt. But you were sleeping with this woman during the time she conceived the baby. Yes, ma'am. Yes, Your Honor. If you find out this child is your biological child, are you prepared to step up and be the father this baby needs and deserves? Yeah, yes, Your Honor. I'd be more than happy to step up and do what I gotta do to take care of the kid. Judge Lake calls in a doctor to help her understand Hirschsprung's disease, and she reveals that there's a chance that the child could get it, even if both the parents have no history of it. Regardless of the fact, Mr. Tuzi still believes he is not the child. Mo. No, 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 hold on. Because you done got on my nerves now. Because you got a smart mouth, but you're not smart enough to know when you're lying. Sitting up trying to pin a baby on a man. A hold on, I'm baby. talking now. I'm talking now since all you can do is shrug your shoulders, stay silent. After having heard everything, Judge Lake is more than ready to call in the results. Turns out Mr. Tuzi is not Kendall's biological father. Judge Lake is left speechless when Miss Renfro says that she knows who the father is, but loses her cool when she shows her attitude. So, Miss Sism, how certain are you that Anthony is the father? I'm 2,000% certain, Your Honor, that Anthony is the father of Osiris. And you are emotional already. Yep. I have a grandson that's eight months old. He needs his father. I lost my dad when I was two. So I know what it's like not to have a father. In a case of babies having babies, Destine Sissom is in court today with her mother, Marilyn, to prove that Anthony Taylor is the father of eight-month-old Osiris, while Osiris's mother, Brenda, believes that it isn't. She was sneaking at my house. She was coming over here lying, conniving, saying, I have a 14-year-old daughter at home. She was sneaking over there, hollering about she was coming over there to see my daughter. That's a lie, Your Honor. My son was going to see, how are you going to tell me what's a lie? Because, you Your Honor, honor you didn't they even was care. having sex in her you house. You didn't even care she, your daughter what was What type of parent is she if she going to kill them? Destiny tells Judge Lake that none of their mothers knew that the two were having sex because whenever her mother called to ask her where she was, Destiny said she was at a friend's place. Brenda, on the other hand, has some choice words for Destine. That's both of them teenagers having sex. My point is exactly. That's the plot. And I didn't know. That's the plot. 
So the reason why we're here is to get down to the bottom of if this child is really your grandchild. Because I know you want to know that. Yes, ma'am. Now, Destiny, before I go further, was my summation of the plot correct? Yeah, Your Honor. It takes Judge Lake a few seconds to get some order in the courtroom, and she says that both sides are pointing fingers at the other, but no one's taking responsibility. She says that no one is paying attention to the fact that they plan to have intimate relations. For, yes, it's Anthony's baby, and it's not, that's what we're here for, to get this deal. It's not my grandbaby. Okay, no. you ain't, don't claim him. You ain't claimed him in eight months? Don't claim him now. Y'all ain't did nothing for him. I've been taking care of this baby. They don't do uh -huh. nothing for him. That's a lie. They don't do nothing for him. Charlo, All no, right. he's not my grandbaby. At the end of the day, we're not my grandbaby. Ladies, ladies, my grandma. daughter had... Brenda says she never suspected them because she saw Destiny with another guy a few weeks before she told Anthony about the pregnancy and assumed that she was just one of her daughter's friends. Marilyn says that before she knew about Anthony, Destiny was a virgin, so the child is his. Destiny, where were you and Anthony having sex? In her house? Yes. When while Miss Riley was home? Yes, Your Honor. She knew I was there because I get off work, uh, Anthony would be like, my mom says you can come over, and I say, okay. I will go over there, I will come, I will come in, say hi, Miss Brenda. She say hi, we go upstairs. Marilyn is just sad that Destiny won't be able to pursue her dreams of becoming a lawyer and a pediatrician because she has to take care of the baby. But Judge Lake says they're all just kids, and the mothers should have done a better job of keeping track of where and who they were with. You find out. I had, had a mouth period. I ended up throwing up. Anthony said, you should go to the hospital because I think you're pregnant. I went and they said I was pregnant. When I found out, I went to her house. And when I walked through the door and I had my papers, she said, let me guess, you're pregnant. I said, yes. Marilyn then drops a bombshell saying that Brenda knew the kids were sleeping around. Because according to Destiny, Brenda had asked them if they were using condoms and gave a bunch to Anthony as well. Judge Lake then decides it's best they talk about how the pregnancy happened. The no, pregnancy, you the is doctor. Anthony with you? Yes. yes. He came to appointments with you? Yes. You and when the baby, baby was born, were, was he at the I hospital? He was there. Yes, we were all there. He cut the baby. He cut the cord and everything. She it. even came without nobody inviting her. Came where? To the house, Peter. Don't say you didn't. Wait a minute. Because they escorted you out, man. Even though Anthony had his reservations about having a kid, in the end, he told Destiny to go through with the pregnancy because he could be killed any day with the amount of people after him and she should have something to remember him by. She has me removed out of the hospital I so she can get honor. my son to no. sign this. This is a birth certificate. My son ain't old enough to be doing all you this. You believe she yes. had you removed from the hospital yes. strategically yes. because yes. they wanted to coerce right. your son into That's signing the I birth certificate. That's you on the right no, today. One of her family... Brenda lashes out at Marilyn and says that when she came to the hospital to see the child, Marilyn asked a security guard to escort her out. Even though Anthony was present at the time of birth, Brenda believes that it's not his because she wasn't allowed to see the baby. Things that I was like going through and like by my cousin dying and everything else is like, I wanted a baby because I feel like one day it was gonna be time for me to die. And I wanted like, I wanted, I wanted just like another seed in this world. So I decided to have a baby. After that roller coaster of arguments, Judge Lake calls in Anthony for his testimony. He says that he's Osiris's father, and he wanted to have a kid just so that one day, if he was killed, a piece of him was still there. I love him in my heart, so why not do anything that, that makes him happy? Baby, and this is nothing against Anthony, because he seems like a lovely young man. He is. You don't give up your life and the possibilities for your future and everything you can be. Judge Lake applauds Anthony for speaking the truth, even though his reasoning wasn't all that sound. Judge Lake then asks Destiny if she had such huge dreams. Why did she throw them away, considering she's now stuck with a much bigger responsibility now? Destiny just popped off with her little dance after I announced the result. That was so ignorant. And then you followed up and showed me where she learned it from. Come on with this. 
The boy sitting over here talking about he want to leave a seed in the world because he don't understand the possibilities for his life. And you all arguing back and forth with one another instead of encouraging and empowering these young people. Destiny and Anthony are over the moon when the results say that he is indeed the father. But even after hearing the good news, the two mothers continue to bicker with Marilyn, saying she'll never let Brenda near her grandson. That's enough to send Judge Lake over the edge.